Great to be here. We've heard a lot about the future, but for the next five minutes, I invite you to travel with me back 4,000 years ago to the ancient Assyrian past, here in the Bronze Age, 2000 BCE. And together, we'll discover a society once lost to us, and there remains the cuneiform texts that reconnect each of us to this big data through social networks. The story begins when I was just a boy. I was raised in a strict Orthodox religion, and from as early as I can remember, my mind was keenly aware of the great and terrible questions of life. Where did we come from? Why are we here? Where are we going? And what is the meaning of life? So in my search for meaning, I did what any good Harvard student would do, and I hit the books. In my case, this meant reading the earliest books known to mankind, the cuneiform tablets from Mesopotamia. There are over a half million cuneiform tablets dispersed throughout the world's museums, such as these 5,000 housed in Harvard's own Semitic Museum. And yet all of these tablets are just a fraction of what still remains buried in the ground and forgotten for over 4,000 years. Think of that, the equivalent of the Library of Alexandria, or perhaps Widener own, Widener's Library, buried in the ground and forgotten. Texts ranging from genres that we enjoy today, from the earliest economic and mathematics texts, to the great works of literature, law, and philosophy. In the course of my study, I was invited to Copenhagen, Denmark, by the Old Assyrian Text Project, in order to study a unique group of texts called the Old Assyrian Caravan Texts. Over 23,000 tablets were discovered at the archeological site of Kultepe, Turkey, ancient Kanesh. These texts are the remnants of the businessmen and venture capitalists of the Bronze Age trade. Much like we would expect to find in the email archives of Wall Street CEOs, these texts are the contracts, receipts, and letters between fathers and sons, husbands and wives, rulers and slaves, but ultimately business partners, all writing back and forth to one another in a highly literate society. However, with this high degree of literacy comes one major obstacle for scholars in this field to tackle, and that is paponymy, the naming of a child after his papa or grandfather, which in this case is hyperactive at this time. In essence, there are too many Tom, Dick, and Harrys to make sense of who's who in the archive. So it's been incredibly difficult to detail the archive of a single merchant, let alone then to, to include this merchant's archive into the interconnected web of the social society in Assyria. To overcome this problem, I collaborated with a talented computer scientist from Carnegie Mellon named David Bamman, and together we developed a probabilistic latent variable statistical model that reconstructs the internal hierarchy of these texts and the merchants therein on the basis of 2,000 old Assyrian letters. I then combined this data with a total of 5,000 old Assyrian tablets into a graphical database, which depicts the names of these merchants and the relationships to one another as nodes and edges. The results of this work have been absolutely amazing. All at once, we can see the overall scope of the, the structure and organization of the old Assyrian network in all its complexity and with a life all its own. Essentially, a Facebook for ancient Assyria. In a single glance, we can pinpoint the major robust actors of this time and notice their lesser known wives who would otherwise, otherwise seldom make history. For me, this means I finally have a solution to the problem of paponymy, and I can begin to accurately reconstruct this old Assyrian society and its social network. For scholars future, in, in future fields and scholars, this means that we now have a way of accessing an otherwise inaccessible group of texts 
through a structure and an organization. So now, what did I find in my search for the meaning of life? That we are all connected in this giant web of social networks, linking us to the ancient Assyrians over 4,000 years ago in essentially the same structures that we com uh, come together in today. That despite the many ways we each feel isolated and divided into tribes, we are all inherently connected to the same great social networks of humanity. Thank you.